Curtis Wilkerson with us from Hog Sports. Curtis, can you answer can you answer the question uh, why Gainesville is such a, ho- a hellhole for Arkansas men's basketball? You know, and you you point to maybe the Gators have been a good team throughout the years, and that's the case. But I think Arkansas has shown up a couple of times with a better team than Florida has, and it's just a, doesn't make any sense to have this many losses in a row in one place. What, what can you make of that? I, you know, I I wish I had the answers there. It's incredible, and, and you know, you're right. There's a a pretty long stretch there where Florida had some really good basketball teams. So you know, it's obviously going to be a difficult place to go down and play. But you know, Arkansas has taken some really good teams down there and and lost too. And you know, it, it's just been a mixed bag of disappointment. It, you know, some so you look at the <laughs> kind of the recent history and and Arkansas's taken a few on the chin. I mean, there's been a few blowouts down there where they just gone and, and not played well. Uh, there have been some one point losses. I mean, so it's, you know, it's last second heartbreak. It's just, you know, complete full on bad games. I mean, you name it, they've just really struggled down there. And I just, I don't know why, but you know, you, you look at it on paper, this matchup tonight and uh, you got to like Arkansas's chances. Uh, and I think if it was if it was anywhere else besides Gainesville, uh, you'd probably feel really good about their chances. It was interesting, you know. Hogstats comes up with all these incredible lists, and I was looking through one of them earlier today, and it was you know Arkansas's last win uh, against every conference opponent on the road. You trickle down, and uh, you get down to the 13th team on the list. It's Mississippi State back in 2015. It's, uh, it's seven years, but it's not that long ago. And then Florida all the way down there in 1995. It's just, uh, it's baffling. And no, I don't really have an answer for it, but I, I hope Eric Musselman and the Razorbacks do tonight. Well, they're a great defensive team, I guess. You know, I wouldn't say great. Arkansas has been a great defensive team. Florida's a good defensive team, but they really lack firepower. But they didn't necessarily need a ton of firepower to beat Auburn at home a couple of days ago. I mean, they held them to 62 points. So for me, you know, why is Florida so good defensively? And then the other aspect of this is we've seen the Arkansas offense begin to travel a little bit more. And, you know, defense is traveling. Offense doesn't always, but it seems recently it's begun to. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a good point. And, and Florida is a good defensive team. And to answer your question, I think it starts uh, under the rim uh, with Colin Castleton, kind of like it does with Jalen Williams for Arkansas. You know, Castleton, uh, 6'11", a mobile guy. He's second in the SEC in block shots. Uh, really does a lot for them. And, and just his presence under the rim, I think it probably gives their guards on the perimeter a little more confidence uh, to be aggressive and, and get active out in the passing lanes, maybe take some chances that they normally wouldn't because they know, hey, if, if my man gets by me, I've, I've got a good rim protector uh, to kind of sure things up on the back side. So uh, I think that's helped them a lot on the defensive end. And, and you know, to go to Arkansas's offense on the road, uh, it's interesting. I, I heard you guys talking about it earlier. It, it, I think it starts with Stanley Amude. His splits from home to road are incredible. I mean, he's averaging about 10 points per game at home, and it goes up to 15.7 on the road. His field goal percentage is about 14% higher on the road than it is at home. His three-point percentage goes from, I think, 27.7 to over 55% uh, in road games. So uh, but I don't know what it is about Bud Walton Arena that you know the, the rims aren't quite as kind to him, but, man, he's really been providing a huge boost offensively on the road, and, and especially when he's knocking down threes like that, it opens up so much for everybody else. So uh, he's definitely one that I'll have my eyes on tonight. And then you look at a guy like an Aldi's Tony, you know what you're going to get out of Note and Jalen Williams, especially if they're staying out of foul trouble. But a guy like Tony, you know, he's one that can give you a dozen on a given night. He's 2 of 17 in his last three games, and, and a lot of those shots for him, we know, come around the rim. Uh, it's an interesting slump for a guy. I mean, going into that stretch, he, his field goal percentage was fifty-seven point one. That's incredibly high and efficient. So you got to think at some point here he's going to get that figured out. And if he breaks out to go along with some of these other guys, I think we'll start to see the offense really start to come around. Mm. And, and when you talk about Adi's Tony, I do think that he is a guy that you do need some uh, offensive productivity. And I know Musselman said it early into the season that he gets most of his points on, on hustle plays, on putbacks, and that they don't run any plays for him. 
Do you think that down this final stretch, it might be wise to to try to get him more productivity on the offensive side to to possibly put in a play or two for Tony? And you know, I'm going to add this as a two parter here. Is Devo finally becoming the Devo that we were hoping, or at least kind of expecting him to be this year? Yeah, you know, so with Tony, it, it has been interesting. You're right. You know, he's, a, he's a guy that they don't run a lot of things for. Uh, he really creates his own just with his energy and, and effort levels. And it's it's kind of been fascinating to watch because he's still been super aggressive um, on his basket cuts and, and attacking the offensive glass. I mean, he had 10 rebounds against Tennessee the other day. Uh, you know, but those shots right around the rim that he, he would typically finish, uh, he hasn't. But, you know, another thing that he's been really good at is absorbing some contact and, and getting to the free throw line. His free throw rate is one of the better ones in the country, uh, and he's knocking them down at over 75%. I think he was 6-6 six of six in that Tennessee game. So, uh, you know, I, I think probably just got to gotta shake it off a little bit, and he probably just needs one or two to go down early, you know, and, and get a little bit of that confidence back. Uh, but I think if he just kind of maintains the same effort, especially as, as good as he plays on the defensive end now is what they're asking him to do, uh, you should be able to get a pretty good spark from him. And and then it's interesting, you know, you mentioned Devo, and this is a guy who's had an up-and-down season as well. I think everybody knows what he's capable of, uh, and he's really provided a boost lately. It, you know, what? Uh, I think the good thing about Devo is his defense has started to come back around. We remember how elite mm-hmm. uh, he was defensively in the NCAA tournament, and he's really gotten back to that. Just, it just I mean, it's relentless when he's really digging in on a guy that five steals in a game. I guess it was two or three games ago. Uh, that's what you love to see from Devo, and, and his offense is always a bonus. And you know, it, we've kind of gotten used to you know the mid-range jumpers and just kind of the herky-jerky nature of how he you know takes guys off the bounce and gets to the rim, finishes with that left hand. But it's been a three-point shot in the last few games. He's, he's knocked down a couple threes in the last two or three games, and it looks good. You know, and, and when he's catching those, especially in the corner. Uh, in rhythm and getting right into his shot, maybe not so much off the dribble uh, and forcing it. That's a quality shot, and it opens up a lot for Arkansas. I think he's playing with a lot more confidence than he was a couple weeks ago. And, you know, it's like Musselman said, whether he comes off the bench as the first guy, third, fourth, whatever, he views him as a starter because of the value he provides. And now he's really starting to play like it, and I think that helps the Razorbacks a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and Curtis, going back to last Saturday, the the red out, the atmosphere that that was Bud Walton, Bud Walton Arena against Tennessee, on on a national and more of a big scale picture, how important, how big was it to really have all those former Razorbacks in the building? I mean, it's incredible. It's and must said it after the game. You know, he spent a lot of time in the NBA in the league in the professional ranks. When guys get a break. You know, if it's NBA All Star Weekend or whatever, uh, most of them aren't trying to go back to their college. They're going to Cabo, and <laughs> he's a hundred percent right. And you know, you'll see guys trickle in here and there, and, and they support their school. But man, to get all of those guys back, and, and not only that, but to get them involved the way they did, you know, I think everybody's seen at this point uh, having some of the pro hogs announce the starting lineups. It's just such a creative idea. Uh, they had him out there during a timeout doing the hog call. Uh, getting them involved like that, I, I think it really speaks volumes, especially on the recruiting trail. Because uh, when you're trying to decide, you know, what school maybe you want to go to, uh, you know, how are you going to be received when you leave? You know, does the does the family atmosphere does it stop when you graduate or when you go on to the next step of your career, or is that a place that you can always go back to and call home? And I, I really think that Eric Musselman's done a fantastic job uh, of just creating kind of that family culture around the Razorbacks, and it wasn't just pro hogs. You know, he had the Martin twins, a couple guys he coached at Nevada, who came to Arkansas for the game because of the relationship they had with each other. Uh, one of the grad assistants on Arkansas staff now is their brother. So, uh, I mean, it, it, it's just fantastic. And, yeah, it's, it's definitely something that's it's a big deal on the national scale. People notice it, and it only helps the Razorbacks. All right, before we let you go here, Curtis, uh, hopefully nobody's looking too far ahead to the next game Saturday, Kentucky. You wouldn't be, we, we wouldn't, we wouldn't blame you if you were, because anytime Kentucky comes in to Bud Walton, it's a, it's a crazy atmosphere. But you have an opportunity to have one of those, you know, like special nights, and that's why I'm kind of hoping that Kentucky beats LSU 
and both teams come in with, uh, you know, red hot. But uh, what would Arkansas need to overcome Kentucky and specifically to overcome Oscar Shibwe? <laughs> well, I mean, the Oscar Shibwe thing, I, I don't know if anybody can – can fully overcome that. You just hope to beat him in all the other areas and, and get away with the win. Uh, he's been incredible. But, but, you know, it, it's interesting that you think about the emergence of Jalen Williams and what he's doing as a volume rebounder, especially in the SEC. It, he's one of very few guys that can, you know, kind of hold his own on the glass against a guy like Sheeble. So I, I'm really looking forward to that matchup. And it kind of depends on what Kentucky you get. I mean, they, they beat Alabama, you know, over the weekend at home. But they were without their starting backcourt. And Ty Ty Washington, which is a really talented freshman, and Severe Wheeler, I, I think, is dealing with a wrist injury. Those guys are, are kind of day-to-day. You don't know how healthy they're going to be. But it does change the dynamic of their team a lot when they have them. So, uh, you know, one thing you have to think about is the health of Kentucky when they come in. But you're absolutely right. It, it's really shaping up to be a special day uh, in Bud Walton Arena. Is, uh, actually, I think I was talking to Ty about it going into the uh, into the Tennessee game. We're talking about Kentucky a little bit. And, you know, the, the students are always rowdy and, and the younger crowd. But the older generation of Razorback fans, they hate Kentucky. And so you're going to really have them involved at a high level, too. So, you know, it's fantastic as, as the Auburn crowd was, the Tennessee crowd the other day. Uh, this might just be at a different level. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I hope both teams handle their business this week because they do. Or whether they do or not, it's going to be fantastic. But if both teams are coming in off the wins, I mean, it's just going to be, uh, I mean, it's going to be insane. There's no other way to put it. Yeah. Pulling for Kentucky kind of makes me feel a little bit dirty, but I can do it for a game, I guess. <laughs> I don't know appreciate I you, man. Yeah, no. It might be over this season, but basketball is in full steam for both pros and college hoops. For all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land, Bet Online is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. Head over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use our promo code BELIEVE to get started. That's promo code BLEAV. And it's not just basketball. Bet Online is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds. Right to the Olympic coverage is the best in the business. From sports right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, Bet Online is your number one online wagering destination. Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. Bet Online, where the game starts.